All right, everybody, welcome to the Revenue Operations Executive Brain Trust after panel discussion. I know that was really long, but this was actually our first meeting, and we had a lot of fantastic conversations. We talked a lot about uh, many different challenges, all the way from time management uh, to syncing separate operations between sales and marketing. And we know that revenue operations is a, an up and coming concept inside of business. It plays a very important role in terms of how you get uh, data to talk to each other. How do you take disparate data sets, bring it together, all sorts of things. Uh, a lot of challenges, a lot of really fun things happening in the revenue operations side. And um, one of the most discussed topics today was in fact syncing separate operations between sales and marketing. And so I've got a great, I've got some members of our brain trust here with me today to kind of share best practices, to talk about how they're tackling this problem, um, to help you and maybe give you some ideas on um, stuff that you can implement inside of your own company. So with that, I have Christina here. She's actually going to kick us off uh, and she's going to talk a little bit about how she's tackling this problem. So with that, I'll turn it over to you, Christina. Thanks. Uh, so I've recently been brought on to a SaaS-based company um, with siloed operations department. So sales, marketing, um, even our CSM team has their own siloed ops department. And I have been brought on um, to head up a RevOps, which is going to centralize reporting, uh, centralize our tech stack, and hopefully at the end of it, also centralize all the operations departments to get collaboration. One of the things that I've been working on with one of my colleagues who is the SVP of strategy is deploying OKRs where there is overlap, um, where sales and marketing need to work together to accomplish the metrics that go up to the company level objectives um, through the KRs and initiatives that are going to drive those. So that's been driving a lot of conversation um, and collaboration across all of the teams. Um, that so far seems to be at least having us marching in the right direction to see some progression of, of that. Hey, Christina, a quick follow-up question that came out of some of my discussions in the Brain Trust as well. Do those uh, OKRs roll up into a business level like North Star metric? Uh, and how does that look? They do. Um, so obviously our North Star metric has been kind of set by our executive leadership team. And then there are OKRs that kind of roll into that, that will help drive that. Um, and they are all in support of that. Right, thanks. Awesome. Thank you so much, Christina. Some great perspective. Uh, absolutely. I think those are, those are great points. Doyle, what are some of the things that you're doing inside your organization? Sure. I think one of the, the big challenges that revenue ops, um, I call it being not on the leading edge, but it's still on the bleeding edge. And I think the reason for that is because it's so cross-functional in nature, right? And it, even still, uh, just like sales enablement had uh, different terms and sales acceleration and those types of things, they all meant different things to different people. I think that's the exact same thing re with revenue ops, right? And so I think we've got to really clearly understand what revenue operations is for our organization. And I think the ideal from what I've observed, there's really three ways to run it. There's a top-down approach, there's a peer-to-peer -peer approach, and there's a bottom-up approach. And I think that the best way to run revenue operations is a top-down approach. Because everything to be, in order for it to be in alignment, there has to be some one with the final say on, on how we're going to prioritize, how it all aligns together across departments, and how we're going to execute effectively. Now, it doesn't mean that you're going to demand this is how it happens. It happens in collaboration, but just like the leader would do, you listen to everyone, you work together, try to come to consensus where there are areas where a decision has to be made. To me, you've got to be able to make the decision. So I ideally see the utopian RevOps um, uh, scenario be that in a very large organization, you would have a chief revenue officer, you have the head of marketing, the head of sales, and the head of customer success, all three of those report into the CRO. Uh, and RevOps is basically the integrator, if you've ever read the book 
uh, from the entrepreneurial operating system traction, as an example. And, and ultimately, they're the ones that help all of those teams execute. And it's the CRO's responsibility to say, listen, if, if RevOps is wrong about how we prioritize and execute, then it's their decision, right? Uh, but anytime you have it reporting to marketing or to sales or to customer success, there's going to be silos and saying, well, they make the ultimate decision. That leaves me out. So that doesn't work. Um, the second thing is, let's say a small company, a small company to me, RevOps, there's a VP of RevOps, so to speak, that maybe reports straight to this, the, the, the CEO. And the same way works. In that situation, um, the, the VP of marketing, the VP of sales, and the VP of customer success, they're all my client. And I'm helping them execute the, the go-to-market strategy and the tech stack strategy and the alignment across the customer life cycle all under one umbrella. And if, if I'm not making a decision that can get everyone, if there's an impasse, then the CEO has the final say. And we all execute against that. But to me, that's the part that's missing most in RevOps today. Um, so I'd be curious to hear if there's any opinions on that. Yeah, Doyle, just to jump in here quickly. Actually, I agree wholeheartedly that it's very important. If the objective of RevOps is to drive alignment on go-to-market strategy, it needs to be in a position to be both uh, authoritative and autonomous and to have a bit of an unbiased view on the problem space, right? Uh, to be Switzerland, <laughs> as it were. Uh, and what I'm observing with our customer base is that there's definitely not a one size fits all approach because at the end of the day, there are humans involved in these conversations. And so you got to figure out both how to make this alignment happen with your humans and your, you know, your go to market motion, uh, the existing teams you have in place, uh, all of that. But yeah, I appreciate your point of view on, you know, top down for large organizations and potentially something different that looks, uh, something that would look different in a smaller organization. Because again, you gotta, you gotta custom fit it into your org and your challenges. Uh, Christina, curious to hear your perspective there. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I, I think um, in the, a lot of the companies that I've walked into in my career, in some cases, I was the first foray into sales ops or rev ops. And once you got the buy-in of the executive team and seeing the value of the metrics and driving towards data-driven decisions versus that more um, like gut instinct or emotional decision-making, then it became, they saw the value and obviously to get more data, it was the top-down directive to, you know, whether it be updating Salesforce or updating your forecast or whatever the case may be, that was the tedious ask that, you know, everybody fought me on. Um, it, you know, that's when it all started to fall in line a little more. Fantastic. Well, we, unfortunately, this has been fantastic. We do have to wrap up. Um, I love uh, all the contributions here today. I appreciate Aaron, Doyle, and Christina for your contributions. I think that OKRs fit beautifully into what you're talking about, Doyle, and really help people uh, and organizations unite together. I think it's a very exciting time for revenue operations. And I hope that you will join us in future revenue operations brain trust events. We'll catch you guys at the next month's event. Have a good one.